heartthrob, handsome, Las Vegas cool. resident. These are descriptors you might, I don't know, reserve for me. But our next guest, frankly, uh, gets oh. them just a, a few more times. Uh, you might know him from the world famous Backstreet Boys. You might know him as a Vegas resident that actually cares about the city and has been here for years. Lovely human being. Nick Carter, everybody. Well, thank Nick you for Carter that introduction. I really appreciate Welcome. that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me, guys. Oh my God. It's good to have you. Absolutely. I love this. I was going to say, we might also know you from your upcoming solo album. Let's start with that. And then we want to hear about how you got stuck in South America when COVID broke out. There's so much to talk about. Yeah, uh, well, I'm recording new music here in Las Vegas. Um, for, uh, I just got uh, revealed on uh, The Masked Singer last night. Yes, congratulations. And yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, so I was the, I was the crocodile, and it was a, a, a ton of fun. Did it for my kids. Uh, did it. Why not? You know, one of yeah. the most memorable things I think I'll ever do. Um, but, yeah, it inspired me to really kind of get back into doing uh, to s some solo music and um, I was right in the middle of a tour with the Backstreet Boys. Uh, we were down in South America and uh, uh, down in Brazil, mm. getting ready to, to mm. uh, the day before, uh, to do a, a show, one of our biggest shows ever for almost 50,000 people at a stadium down there. And we were starting to see the sh uh, pr previous shows before, people were starting to wear masks in the audience. And, and you know, we were following all the news and we were like, this is actually turning into something very serious. And yeah. Um, so at, you know, we rightfully had to, uh, uh, cancel that show, um, and it, it quickly as we could, uh, get on a plane before, um, you know, the borders were closed because, you know, they wanted to kind of stop the influx of whatever in and out at that time. And yeah. so, um, yeah, it, it just, everything came to a halt like everyone else out there. We were in the middle of a world tour, um, getting ready to launch 50 shows in the in the states right after that. Uh, that was supposed to happen, you know, um, and wow. it should have already happened. But yeah, and so came back home, uh, you know, hunkered down with my my kids, uh, pretty much uh, full blown, full 100 percent uh, dad mode. That's my job right now, and you know, just following all the protocols and doing quarantine and, you know, wearing our masks and just laying low and uh, seeing where things go. But I decided, you know, from the, the, the mass singer show that it might be cool to, to drop a single. So I have a song that I'm releasing this Friday, um, on new music Friday. It's going to be on Spotify. It's going to be on iTunes. Nice. The song's called eighties movie. And it's a, uh, it's really it's a great nostalgic feel. And I think people are going to really love it, especially around the holidays. That's fantastic, man. Congratulations on everything. Here's the thing with the Backstreet Boys uh, in, your, in your career. I mean, you really haven't stopped. I mean, it's been, what, 25 years of just straight like working. Uh, yeah, to have kind of like a forced vacation here, at least for a few months this year. Good? Bad? Has it been driving you nuts? Um, I eat a lot more than I want to. <laughs> you too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you know... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, listen, there's definitely the silver lining that we are all trying to take from this experience that we are all going together, uh, going through together in this mm -hmm. world. Um, the one thing that I can say is that, you know, I wouldn't have seen my, uh, celebrated my daughter's first birthday. Um, you know, I wouldn't have been able to connect as much with her. I would have been like in Australia or something like that. Yeah. Um, you know, my, my son as well. So um, I'm, you know, the spending time with them and being, you know, with my kids, I've always wanted to, 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 to be more home, you know, home more. Um, and this kind of just happened that way. And, um, that's the silver lining I'm taking from it. Um, Sweet. and you know, uh, look, I, I like to say that when, when things do kind of come back and once everyone is safe and once things are, you know, open back up again, we as entertainers, we want to be there to be able to bring joy into people's lives. When people want to have uh, human interaction again and connection, you know, there's nothing like a, a live experience. There's nothing like it. And so, yeah. you know, we're we're once it all comes back, we're going to be there for everyone. It's going to be a party. I love that you say that. I always say that, Nick, that that you can listen to a song, but there's something that literally is magical about being in the room when live music happens. And so we look forward to you uh, going back on tour with the Backstreet Boys. That's awesome. You know, when this all is over with. Um, and also, uh, I just I have to tell you, it's so nice to hear you talk about your family. It just kind of makes me 
you know, like you even more. And I know Thank that you. you're not just thinking about your own family. You're thinking about other people's family. You started yes. this incredible relationship with the Cure for the Kids Foundation that helps with pediatric cancer. Tell us why you're so yeah. passionate about this organization. Well, that's another one of the silver linings I think that happens when we've all gone into quarantine and, you know, we are, we're home, we're, we're thinking about life and we're thinking about real life and, and not just about ourselves. And that's what happened. I got an, a moment to really, to just think about, you know, what is everyone else going through out there? What can I do to sort of give back? I know that I'm fortunate and, and grateful to be able to have, you know, healthy children and, and to be, and, but not everyone has that. Um, in in their life, not every family has that, mm -hmm. um, and and so that's when I started to think about um, you know this nonprofit out here, Cure for the Kids, uh, which I was introduced right around the residency when I came here to Las Vegas, mm -hmm. and they I just saw what they were doing. I uh, walked the entire uh, the entire hospital and saw all the different uh, uh, the rooms, you know, and all the things that they were doing, how they were doing it, the the medical breakthroughs, the advancements, the, the, the fact that they, they are there at a time, especially when people don't have, you know, or they're losing their insurance. There, there's people out there mm. who, you know, are, are struggling right now. And, you know, and I look at my children and, and I go back to what I was saying, you know, thankfully, thank God they're healthy. But as a father, you know, I can only, I can't imagine what a family is going through and yeah. to know that this yeah. Uh, organization um, exists um, is just a blessing. So, you know, that's why I wanted to kind of just start to get involved in something, especially in a community that has given so much to me. No question. Well, uh, you know, it's really nice. great that you're stepping up for them and we're going to make sure to point people in the right direction for Cure for the Kids. Uh, Nick, it's great having you, my friend. We appreciate having you. you on the show and uh, we're, we're proud to call you a Vegas resident. Good to see you, Nick. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. All right, Woo. Cure, the number four, thekids.org. <laughs> see what we did? Oh, man, it's just Nick Carter. Uh, cure for the kids dot org. Cure the number four, the kids dot org. If you want to learn more about that great organization, we thank Nick for joining us today.